my friends <clears throat> today i'll be discussing about the breaking on a royal enfield first let me tell you a thing or two about the brakes you can see here that the front this model is a classic 350 and the front there's a 280 mm disc brake with a two piston caliper there it's a floating caliper not a radially mounted one and on the rear you can see that it's a drum brake it's a 150 mm drum at the rear so talking about the brakes the bite at the front is very strong but the feel at the lever it's it's not good you can see here see you can see that it's very tight and you compare this with the disc brake on any other motorcycle like maybe a bajaj pulsar or a hero extreme or a duke or cbr or any other such bike the feel would be much better but this is very hard and you feel it very tight and uh, about the rear brake the rear brake is just as good as useless maybe uh, the rear brake needs to be tightened every week once and because of the massive weight of the motorcycle the brake tends to wear out very fast and here's the brake lever you can see that it's quite soft doesn't give you the feedback or the bite that you would expect from a brake so now i'll be discussing about the procedure on how to bring this motorcycle to a halt as fast as you can and without any without losing line or traction uh this because of the massive weight of the motorcycle when you apply the rear brake <clears throat> and the front brake together especially in conditions of rain when it's raining the front locks up very fast because if the feel is tight and if you do this you won't even have any feedback and you pull it a little bit tighter and it locks up and so you end up losing line and the front skids out of control and you might end up skidding and falling so now i'll be discussing about the procedure on how to bring this bike to a halt fastest as fast as possible okay friends now i'll be giving a demonstration of the braking technique on this bike <clears throat> now naturally what people do when they want to brake on a bike is they end up pressing it completely like this now this is a dry tire mac and the tires will have good grip and good traction so when you are braking you will not actually know the difference the bike will be reducing speed normally but what happens in a wet condition on a wet surface when you do that is the front brakes have got really good bite but the feel at the lever is lacking you will not actually know how much force the brake pads are putting on the disc so you will end up pressing it a little more and the front wheel will lock up very quickly and then what follows is your front wheel locks up your tire skids out of control your bike skids out of control then and you end up falling by the side of the road so now i'll be showing what to actually do in such a condition how to use the brakes provided on this bike to reduce speed quickly see that i am doing 70 and now let's show you a quick deceleration see how quickly i could decelerate i not i didn't lose traction i didn't lose control my bike stayed in a straight line but with the stock tire itself and the stock brake setup itself 
I could decelerate so quickly. I'll be giving you another demo now. So, what you got to do is you got to press release, press release, and press release the brake. Do not press it all at once. So, by pressing and releasing it, you will be shredding speed but not locking up the brake. Now, just look now. See, from 60 decelerated so quickly. So, this technique is actually doing manually what an ABS does electronically or using hydraulic controls. So I found this technique very useful to reduce speed on this bike. See, you can use this technique in almost any condition, not just in wet, even in dry, you will be reducing speed very quickly and bringing this heavy bike to a quick halt. That's it from my end friends. If you have any comments or queries, can post them in the comment section below.